First and foremost, I want to give a call hello to Yahweh. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, which the world calls God. And Yahweh Shah is the name of his only begotten son, who the world only calls Jesus Christ. First and foremost, I want to give a strong shalom to all the mighty men. They're going out there, they're laboring. They're presenting their bodies as a living sacrifice. They're doing all they can to wake up the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Not only that, they're enduring the elements, the 100 degree weathers, freezing below codes, and everything that's trying to handle the work of the Mosai. Shalom, shalom. Want to give another strong shalom to the Akwath, all right, the sisters that are at home, reverencing their husbands, being teachers of good things, and the unmarried sisters as well, being tender, delicate, and on fire for the Most High God, Shalom, Shalom. Last but not least, I want to give another strong Shalom to all the mighty teenagers and children in this truth, doing all they can to make their calling and election sure in the last days. All right, and by the topic of this uh, cold cut is titled, All right, Seven Days Till Passover. All right, it's about approximately, you know, seven days till the Passover. And what spirit are you in? All right. And seven is a number of completion. It's a complete amount of days to the Lord's Passover. Are you purging your spirit? What spirit are you in? Do you have the right spirit of the Lord's Passover? These are things you have to be thinking about so you can become worthy and acceptable in the eyes of the Lord. The spirit you should be in is the spirit of grace. Meekness, lowliness, thankfulness that the Most High allowed you, Lord willing. You know, we are all allowed to see that day. All right. With the spirit of thankfulness to see another day to eat at the Lord's Passover, man. Because on a deeper level, we're all not worthy. We all don't deserve it. We don't deserve to eat at the Lord's Passover. Hey, we don't deserve to be in this truth. We don't deserve to wake up another day. But the Most High has given us grace and mercy, yet time, time out, and time in again to keep his law, statutes, and the commandments. So I want to kick it off with the book of First Thessalonians. All right. Actually, I want to kick it off with the book of Luke. It's like here, Malachi. Let's go to Malachi chapter 2. All right. So what spirit are you in? You know, God forbid you have brothers in the spirit of mirth. You got sisters in the spirit of um, slothfulness, all right? The spirit of low faith, the spirit of folly and vanity. Again, you want to be in the spirit of meekness and lowliness. Hey, the Most High, he didn't. He could have took you out of this truth. The Most High didn't have to have you to see another Passover, man. The Most High could have should have been could have been got rid of you via the angels and said, "Hew you down." For all of the iniquities you have committed, the crimes, the wicked thoughts, the wicked things that proceeded out of your mind, out of your belly, your mouth, your actions. But yet again, the Most High has given us grace and mercy, Lord willing to see that day. We can't take that in vain, man. You know how many brothers, previous years and sisters that have ate at the Lord's Passover? That it might have thought they was going to be in this thing. Guess what? They're not here this Passover, man. They're, some of them are back in the world. Some of them are doing God knows what. Some of them are not keeping the commandments anymore. They stopped praying. They, they stopped fasting. They have waxing worse. And here you have it. The most I gave you this opportunity again. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity, man. All right, people, they talking about the eclipse. Oh, wow, that's, you know, the solar eclipse. That was a once-in-a-lifetime, you know, thing. Well, guess what? Hey, this Passover, this is once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, man, to keep this high holy day. Why? Because it's a lot of people that was here last year. Guess what? They not here this year, man. It's people that was there two years ago, three years ago. But guess what? They not here anymore. So if the Most High has granted you that opportunity, this is not a light thing. Let me bring this out in Malachi, the second chapter. All 
All right, God forbid we should take this thing for granted. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 2, and verse number 15. All right, it's the book of Malachi, chapter 2 and 15. And did not he speak, it's like, and did not he make one, yet had the residue of the spirit, and wherefore one, that he might make, it's like, that he might seek a godly seed. Therefore, take heed to your spirit. All right. Now, this is really dealing with, you know, the children of Judah that was putting their wear their wives. They was dealing trustly with their wives. Nevertheless, this applies to us. We have to take heed to our spirit. Examine what spirit are we in? You have men, you know, they're approaching a the Passover. They're in the spirit of pridefulness. Their mind is meditating on the wrong things. They're in the spirit of uh, envy. They're in the spirit of murder. You have certain men that in the spirit of murder. They think that's uh, the pastor. That's just a, a, a show, a talent show. No, that's off. Again, the Lord said, take heed to your spirit. Because when you read the Gospels, you read about Yahweh Shah from Mark, Matthew, John, Luke, Mark. You read what spirit Yahweh Shah was in approaching the Passover. Yahweh Shah was in a sorrowful spirit because he knew what time it was. He wasn't in a mirthful spirit. He knew he had to die for the nation of Israel. He knew that he would be betrayed. He knew that he would suffer many things and be rejected of the generation. We want to be in the same spirit as our Lord and Savior, Hamashiach wa Malachi Abishai. So it says, therefore, take heed to your spirit. All right. And that's very important because if you don't take heed to your spirit and you moving in the wrong spirit, that spirit could hop on somebody else around you. Next thing you know, now they're overtaken. All because of you wasn't in the right spirit. Everybody is a leader. Everybody is being looked at as an example. So if you're not moving in the right spirit, again, that spirit could hop from you to the next man or to the next sister. All because you didn't take heed to your spirit. Now, let me get this in the, in the book of Luke. All right. Let me get this in the book of Luke, chapter 9, and verse number 55. All right, this is what Yahweh Shah said to his disciples. This is the book of Luke, chapter 9 and 55. But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. Because guess what? The disciples, they wanted the Yahweh Shah to call down a uh, fire from heaven and destroy of uh, those men that didn't treat them well but that's what that's not in the right spirit to be in man how much more for the passover of the lord which is a night to be observed and it's one of the best nights of all time when you go back into egypt and everything that happened hey that midnight that was one of the greatest you know night times of all time you know, Jake said he Jake he liked the nighttime at Paris when he's on top of the Eiffel Tower. All right, it's one in the morning. You know, he got some drink in his hand. He think that's a beautiful night. Or you might be outside, you might be looking at the stars and the moon and all the elements in the sky. You may say, man, it's a great night tonight. Kicking it with the brothers. Well, guess what? That don't compare to the midnight or the night that happened during the time of the Exodus. All right. When the night was swift in its course. All right. And Yahweh Shah came down and destroyed all of those Egyptians. And the Israelites had to pass. So, hey, the Lord said that's a night to be remembered. All right. That's it's, it's not a night to just, oh, yeah, we're just going to come in here. We're going to have fun. Then we're going to forget it. No. And hey, you could die, man. Again, you could get taken out of this truth. The most I could take his spirit away from you. Again, this is the Lord's night, um, a night to be observed. So I'm going to read that again. It says, ye know not what manner of spear ye are of. For the son of man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. All right. So we know what spirit not to be of, not to be in, but we have to know what spirit to be in. Again, which is the spirit of having your head down, man. 
God forbid you have brothers lifting up their head like they're justified by their works to see the most size pass over again. That's off. Like you uh you made it or something. You know, you got a lot of brothers, they like that. They prideful, they get big headed, and they come into this thing like they made it by their works. Guess what? It's not about your works, man. It's about the grace, you know, over time you start to learn it's about the grace and mercy of the Lord. Because no man is justified by his works. All right. And the Lord said, by works uh, shall no flesh be justified, paraphrasing. But again, it's the grace and mercy of the Lord. So you should be in a spirit of having your head down. All right. The spirit of humbling yourself. The spirit of you are nothing in the eyes of the Lord. And at the most I grant you mercy. Lord will, if you make it to this one. To see another one and to increase as we approach more and more into the last days. Let's see what spirit Yahweh was in. Let's go to the book of Hebrews. All right, let's go to the book of Hebrews. It's the book of Hebrews. Chapter five and verse number seven. All right, it's the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, and verse number 7. Talking about Yahweh Shai, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications, and with strong crying and tears. So, hey, during the time of the, of the Lord about to be offered after the of the Passover, during that night, hey, Yahweh Shai, he was crying, man. He was crying out to the Most High. He had strong tears coming down. He was trying to endure sore pains in his body, like Eleazar. Will you read 2 Maccabees, the sixth chapter? All right, 31, all the way on down. It didn't say he was in a spirit of mirth. It didn't say he was in a spirit of pride. It didn't say his mind was on folly and vanity. No. He was offering up crying, shlakia, strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard and that he feared. So Yahweh was crying out to the Most High, man, on the night of the Passover, smoking upon his chest, asking him to be saved from death. And you have to be the same way, both leading up before it, crying and and uh, asking the Most High to wipe you of your iniquities, to wipe your garment out, that the destroyer pass over you and don't destroy you. You know, a lot of people in this truth, they think they can't be destroyed, man, just because they're in the truth. If you really truly understood the Most High through experience, seen plethora of his judgments, seen his mighty hand, how much strength and power that he has and his great dominion. And you will be terrified. You will be scared of the Most High. Got a lot of brothers in the truth. They're not really scared of the Lord, man. And you better ask the Most High to increase his fear uh, in you toward him like David did. Because if not, and you don't, you're not walking around with that fear of the Lord, you're going to walk around freely, all right, with a free spirit, with no fear in the world. You could do anything. You don't need any correction, any guidance. You're just walking around. Guess what? That's not what the Most High is about. Let me get this in Exodus chapter 12. So again, that night of the Passover was beautiful, man. All right, I know a previous Passover, man. Hey, some brothers they they shed tears. That's how beautiful it was, in the spirit of uh, a solemn feast, like in the ancient days. Not in the spirit of Negroes, you know, that just want to sip on the wine, or think it's a fashion show. All right, or think, oh yeah, I'm just gonna be around the brothers. We gonna turn up. It's deeper than that. It's all about Hamashiach with Marak Yabushah. Let's go to the book of Exodus, chapter 12. 
It's the book of Exodus, chapter 12 and verse number 42. I'm going to start at verse 41. And it came to pass at the end out of the 430 years, even the same self same day, it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. So you got to think about this. Imagine 430 years. All right. 430 years. You're finally being free. 430 years of captivity, of slavery, bondage, oppression. Doom darkness you're being free and let out the land of egypt verse 42 it is a night to be much observed unto the lord so this is a a, a night that's much observed unto the most high above all other nights throughout the whole history of the world it says for bringing them out from the land of egypt this is that night of the lord to be observed of all the children of Israel and their generations. So again, this is a night to be observed, man. Let's see what Yahweh Shah was doing on this night. Was he turning up? Was he prideful? And he was crying. Yahweh Shah was pouring out his soul into his disciples, saying, stay up with me. Just, just wait one more hour. And it's a lot that went down on this night, man. You know, hey, this night get a hey, the Passover get emotional, man. Through the spirit. Tears get shed on that night, man. Alright? Prayers, cryings out to the most high. Again, this is a night to be much observed. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 24, and verse number. Actually, I want Matthew 26. All right, this is the book of Matthew, chapter 26, and verse number 36. This is Matthew, chapter 26 and 36. And it reads, Then cometh Yahweh Shah with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and said unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with them Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then he said unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. That's the spirit of Yahweh Shah, man, on the Passover. Exceeding sorrowful. Hey, and you should be exceeding sorrowful. With your head in the in dirt, in the earth. For all of the sins and iniquities that you have committed. All right, you shouldn't you, you shouldn't be big headed off the sins, man. Then let's go to let's hold that. Let's go to Psalms chapter thirty eight. Then David say, you know, he will be sorry for his sin. Let's go to Psalms chapter thirty eight and eighteen. You have a lot of men; they're not really sorry for their sins that they have committed. A lot of sisters think their sins, you know, it doesn't really matter. You're forgiven. Everything's going to be okay. There's no remorse behind it. You get emotional for everything else. Dog might die. Cat. But when it comes to... Alright? And your iniquities, you're not remorseful for it. Let's go to the book of Psalms. Chapter 38 and verse number 18. Right? This is the book of Psalms. Chapter 38 and 18. For I would declare my iniquity. I will be sorry for my sin. Hey, when you read verse 17, it says, For I am ready to help, and my sorrow is continually before me. I would declare my iniquity. I will be sorry for my sin. That's what you have to You have to be sorry for your sins, man. Hey, you should be angry. Hey, this should fuel you and push you to serve the most side more and more and more. Seeing that you could never, it's nothing that you could do to repay the most out for what he has done for you. But serve him. But give your life over unto him. You can't repay the most out with money. You can't repay the most out with uh, food, man. 
You can't repay the most high with none of this vanity. You can only repay him by giving your life back to him, man. Like Saul, so your iniquities and your sins, ultimately, yes, you should be sorry with your head down. All right. But hey, this should fool you to uh, serve the most high more and more. Hey, the Lord said, let me get this in uh, Syrac chapter 10. The Lord said, why is earth and ashes proud? Hey, you got to remind yourself that you're nothing, man. All right. This is the book of Syrac. Chapter 10. This is the book of Syrac, chapter 10 and verse number 9. Why is earth and ashes proud? There is not more wicked thing than a covetous man. For such as one setteth his own soul, because while he liveth, he cast away his vows. So again, the Lord said, why is earth and ashes proud? Why? Why is man so prideful? Guess what? That's the nature and sinful nature of man, man. Let's go to Genesis chapter 16. Let's see what Abraham said. All right. Actually, Genesis uh, chapter 1, Genesis chapter 19. Hey, Abraham said he is nothing. And he's the father of faith, the friend of the Most High. This is the book of Genesis chapter 19. And verse number, it's like in Genesis chapter 18 and verse number 27. All right, it's the book of Genesis chapter 18 and 27. And Abraham answered and said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. All right, so Abraham said he's dust and ashes. When are you going to learn that? When are you going to learn that it's not about you, man? That you're dust and ashes. That the Most High deserves all the honor, glory, and praise. For his righteous judgments. For his mercy that endureth forever. And when you read the Psalms, that's all you read. All right? Praise the Most High for his mercy endureth forever. You think David just saying that for no reason? No, because his mercy literally does endure forever. And again, you should use that. Your iniquities. Let's go to Psalms. Chapter 40. Your iniquities, which is filthy and vile and evil, which are the more, you know, than the hairs on your head, to serve the most high even more, to clear that debt. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 40, and verse number 12. This is the book of Psalms 40 and 12. For innumerable evils have compassed me about. My iniquities have taken hold upon me so that I am able, it's like you, so that I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of my head. Therefore, my heart faileth me. You have to be in the spirit of David, man. Not even looking up your head to the heavens. All right. Your heart faileth with inside you. For all the iniquities and the sins you have committed. Yet the Most High has granted you to live to see another Passover. That's beautiful, man. Give me, let's go to Job chapter 11. All right, let's go to the book of Job, the 11th chapter. Verse number six. All right, so again, the topic of this cold cut is, all right, seven days to Passover. And what spirit are you in? It's the book of Job, chapter 11 and verse 6. And that he will show thee the secrets of wisdom, that they are double to that which is. Know therefore that God exacteth, exacteth of thee less than thy iniquity deserveth. So what that's saying is, a hey, note of the most side, you know, he's showing mercy on you more than your iniquity deserveth. You're really supposed to be punished for your iniquities. All right, but the most high exacted of the less than thy iniquity to deserve it because you deserve the death penalty. All right, and you deserve to be crucified, man, like Yahweh Shah. You deserve to be hanged, stoned, 
But the most I exactly less than your iniquity deserveth. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let's see what the Apostle Paul said. So again, this is a one light, once in a lifetime opportunity, man. All right. And we coming into the days, you know, which is another cold cut, you know, for another day. But we coming into the days, man. It's going to be made manifest who really loves Yahweh Shai and who's really faking it. And it's true. All right. Who's just saying I love the Lord and who actually really loves the most I got and his son of Mashiach Omar like Yahweh Shai. And due time, true colors will come out. Let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians. Chapter 15 and verse number 9. All right. This is the book of 1 Corinthians. Chapter 15 and 9. For I am the least of the apostles. That I am not meet to be called an apostle. Because I persecuted the church of God. So hey, Paul said he's not even meet to be called an apostle, man. Why? Because he persecuted the church. He was killing the saints. He was he was a murderer. All right. He's not even meet to be called an apostle. Verse 10, it's the point. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me and the Lord's grace was bestowed upon everybody watching his life. You watching his life, you in his truth. And the most high grace was bestowed upon you, man. He allows you to repent. He allows you to turn away from your sins. He allowed you to know his name. All right. He allowed you to keep the feast days. To go to camp. Everybody, you know, in his truth, the grace of the most high was bestowed upon him. It wasn't just the apostle Paul. All right. Or the early church fathers. No, that grace was bestowed upon everybody. Read on, read on, and it says, which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But the difference between us and the Apostle Paul is if we're going to let that grace that the Lord gave us be bestowed in vain or not. Are you going to do something with that grace? A Paul... I'm going to read on. It says, I'm going to read that again. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. See that? So the apostle Paul, he labored more abundantly than the rest of the apostles. He put in more work than Peter. He put in more work than John. He put in more work than Bartholomew. He put in more work than Nathaniel, than Thomas, Andrew, Philip. Why? Because he didn't want to let that grace go in vain, man. Paul said, you know what, man, I was a murderer. I was off, man. The most I brought me to the truth, I can't let this go in vain. I'm going to be a definition of an apostle. I'm going to be a real definition of an Israelite. I'm going to keep the Passover. Hey, Paul kept the Passover, man. I'm going to keep the Pentecost. All right. I'm going to keep the first, the feast of first fruits. I'm going to go in the fat. At the Lord, the apostle, I'm going to take this Nazarite vow. Do not let the grace of the Lord that was bestowed upon you be in vain. Be for not. Don't have the Lord. Repent inside himself saying, why did I even bring this man into the truth? Don't have the most I repent inside himself saying, why did I let this man keep another Passover? All right. Why did I let this sister live to see another year? Why did I do? You don't want to have the most I repent inside himself like he did with our forefathers. And the Lord in the ancient world, he said, why repenteth me that I made man? When you read Genesis, the sixth chapter, due to all of the wickedness. You don't want to let the grace and mercy of the Lord be bestowed upon you in vain. Because that mercy, the Lord didn't have to do that. And we have benefits, man, to blink, to see, 
T taste, touch. All right. It's out of Lord's mercies that we not consume. Let me get that in Lamentations. All right. You don't want to abuse that or let it go in vain. Be slothful with it. Not take it serious. A, a lot of people, they let the grace of the Most High go in vain because they don't take this truth serious. All right. They don't take these commandments serious. They think that this is a game like we always say, which is a not. This is a lifestyle. This is people's lives that we playing with, man. This is the book of Lamentations. Chapter 3 and verse number 22. All right. This is the book of Lamentations. Chapter 3 and verse number 22. I'm going to start at verse 21. It says, this I recall to my mind. Therefore have I hope. So you have to call these things to your mind. Like Jeremiah the prophet. You have to cause these things to mind. Recall these things to mind like the men of the Lord. The women of the Lord. It says, it is of the Lord's mercies that are we are not consumed. Because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. So it's of the Lord's tender mercies that we not finished, man. That we're not dead. And when you read second address, let me get this in second address. Alright. You read second address. And the Lord said, if it wasn't up to his mercies, the tenth part of men shall not be remaining. So without the Lord's mercies, hey, we see no Passover. We never get freed out of Egypt. Yahweh doesn't die on the cross. Yahweh doesn't die for our sins. All of these is because the all of these is because the Most High's mercy and grace, which was bestowed upon us. It's the book of Second Edges, chapter seven, and verse number sixty-four, and that He is patient. And long suffereth those that have sinned as his creatures. And the Lord is, he has the ultimate patience. Because you might see somebody go off. Jake in the world, you getting heated, you getting vexed. You saying that's off, that's evil. Your wife go off. You're heated, your temperature is on a thousand. Well, guess what? How you think the Lord feels about us? Yeah, he is patient. And long suffering. Verse 65. And that he is bountiful, for he is ready to give where it needeth. And that he is of great mercy, for he multiplieth more and more mercies to them that are present, and that are past, and also to them which are to come. For if he shall not multiply his mercies, if the Most High just shut down all of his mercy, shut down the grace. And if he shut down the grace, we're not even saved. We need grace to be saved, for by grace ye are saved. This is the gift of God. That's Ephesians 2 and 9. If the Most High is to shut down all of his mercy, what's going to happen? It reads, the world would not continue with them that inherit. And he pardoneth. For if he did not so of his goodness, that they which have committed iniquities might be eased of them, the 10,000th part of men should not remain living. See that? The Lord wasn't merciful to his disobedient people. The tenth part of men shall not remain living. A lot of people would be dead. This earth would be deserted. So this is all showing you, again, how important the day of the Passover is. And what spirit to be in. Again, this is uh, seven days till Passover, man. Which is a short amount of time. A complete amount of time. Seeing that seven is a number of completion. A spiritual number. Let's go to the book of Romans. It's the book of Romans. Chapter 5 and verse number 7. It says, for scarcely a righteous man will one die. 
So for a righteous, for hey, somebody has scarcely died for a righteous man, scarcely, meaning below ten percent, below ten percent of the people would die for a righteous man. It says, yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. All right, look how many people on the earth. A lot. Jake is not willing to die for his brother. A hey, Jacob rat his brother out, man. Snake him. Sell his brother out. Family. Hey, the Lord said, greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his brother. Man is not, a uh, man would even dare to do that for a good man. It says what? But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, while we were off, adulterers, idolaters, we smokers, drinkers. Yeah, certain men they used to uh just get drunk all day from the from the morning to the evening. Shoot up crack, heroin. Men come in adultery, women come in adultery. Watching God things that we shouldn't be watching. Again, smoking, torturing people, robbing people, thieving, getting over hating our brothers in our hearts. All of that is the sins. It says what? Christ died for us. So while we were yet in sin, Yahusha died for us. And Yahusha got spitted on, man. Beat up. Spin in his face. Betrayed. All right. Stab down. Beat up, man. Whips on his back. Crown of thorns on his head. Had to carry a heavy cross. He wasn't able to bear. Hated. Men continually seeking his life to kill him. From the day of his birth. To the day of his death. Yet. He still died for you. So you can see another Pesach. That's beautiful man. And again, we can't take this once in a lifetime opportunity, this once in a lifetime night, all right, which is a night to be observed much and take it in vain. We want to be like the Apostle Paul, take that grace of the Most High, which was bestowed upon us and have that grace abound into many full works. So again, the spirit that you should be of, uh, be in, Slakia, is the spirit of sorrowfulness, with your head down, humility, crying out to the Mosa, thanking the Mosa for his manifold righteous works and grace and mercy bestowed upon us, even when we didn't deserve it. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 107. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 107, and verse number 43. Whoso is wise and will observe these things. So this is only for the wise. This is not for the idiots. This is not for the proud, the simple-minded. This is for the wise men and women of the Lord that understand who the Most High truly is. It says, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. So if you're really a wise person, the spirit of wisdom is upon you, you're going to understand the true loving kindness of the Lord. How the Lord is worthy to be praised at all times. All right. The gratitude that he has showed toward us. When we was nothing but treacherous to the Lord. Right. Let's go to the book of Hosea. When we was nothing but evil to the Lord. When we questioned him. You know how many times you questioned the Lord? You know how many times that you have tempted him and asking for a sign with the lack of faith? Yet he still showed gratitude and favor. 
right? It's the book of Hosea, chapter 14, and verse number 9. It's the book of Hosea, chapter 14, and verse number 9. It says, Who is wise, and he shall understand these things. Prudent, and he shall know them. For the ways of the Lord are right, and the just shall walk in them. But the transgressors shall fall therein. Don't be like the transgressors, the transgressors, and fall with their wicked works. And didn't pay attention to the gratitude of the Most High. That didn't pay attention to the loving kindness of the Lord. That had the grace of the Lord bestowed upon them, but they took it in vain. That had the mercy of the Most High that was given to them, but they took it for naught. That thought this thing was a, uh, a fashion show, like we say. It's more than that. Again, it's really Yahweh Shah's day, man. The night of the Passover. Again, it's seven days away. Take heed to your spirit. Pray, fast, read, study. Ask the Lord for forgiveness so you can be counted worthy to eat thereof. Let's go to the book of First Corinthians. I want to get this in the book of First Corinthians. Chapter 11 and 24. It says, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take eat. This is my body, which was broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye shall shoot the Lord's death till he come. And that's what we're doing. Do this in remembrance of the Lord. Don't do this for man. Do this for uh, gratification. Don't do this for views or what's good or what's trending. Do this in remembrance of the Lord. That's all the Lord asks for you to remember him. Because man has forgotten him. Man has said he's not real. Man has said he didn't die for the uh, sins of the nation of Israel. It's a lot of men has painted him to be white. All the Lord asks it's for you to do this in remembrance of him. Didn't he ask the disciples that? Didn't he ask in Matthew, the 26th chapter, the disciples to watch with him one hour? And he fell asleep on the Lord, man. Hey, Lord willing, we don't know, but Lord willing, if we was there through the spirit, Lord willing, right, we would have never fell asleep on the Lord, man. Lord willing. All right. Nevertheless, they fell asleep on Yahweh Shai. And all he asked was to stay up and watch with him. To bear his sorrow. Again, do this in remembrance of me that's written. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 26, and verse number 40. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep. And said unto Peter, What can ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit is willing, indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, all the Lord wanted him to do was to watch one hour. And all the Lord is asking now is for us to take this grace and mercy that he gave us, not let it be in vain. And do this in remembrance of him. That's the least that you could do. So again, seven days till Passover. Make sure that you're in the right spirit. Make sure you, you know purging leaven from the quarters in your house. You're doing all you can to not forget the night that's much to be observed. All right, but with that, 
We're going to give all honor and glory to Yahweh by Shema Mashiach Womanak Yahweh Lord willing, this video was edifying. Continue to read, pray fast, study. Most importantly, beseech Heavenly Father for His mercy. And with that, I'm going to say Shalom.